Hello, my name is Carlos Sanchez and I'm here to talk to you about dedicated infrastructure in a multi-tenant world. I work at Adobe and I'm going to talk to you about some of the things we are building uh, there in, in one of the services. I'm a cloud engineer at the Adobe Experience Manager Cloud Service and I'm a long time open source contributor. I started the Jenkins Kubernetes plugin that allow you to run uh, Jenkins agents on Kubernetes. But I've been a long time contributor at uh, other projects like Apache Maven, Puppet and a few other things. Just so you know, uh, I'm gonna do a brief ex introduction on what Adobe Experience Manager is. This is a content management system um, that does digital asset management, digital enrollment and forms, and it's used by many Fortune 100 companies. This is the product that I work on at Adobe and my team. It's um, from a technical point of view, it's an existing distributed Java OSGI application that uses a, a lot of open source components from the Apache Software Foundation. It also has a huge market for extension uh, developers that write modules that run in process on, on Adobe Experience Manager. And this is important, uh, you'll, you'll see uh, later. We are running a Adobe Experience Manager cloud on Kubernetes, and this has been uh, launched uh, over a year ago. And this is all running on Azure. We have more than 14 clusters right now and growing multiple regions, United States, Europe, Australia, Japan, and we keep adding more. And also something to note is that Adobe has a dedicated team managing clusters for multiple products. So we are one of the customers of this other team. So we get the clusters and this uh, defines what we can do in the clusters, right? So we don't have full access to, to the Kubernetes clusters. Important thing, customers can run their own code. We have limited cluster permissions for security. And another requirement is that traffic leaving the, the cluster must be encrypted for, for compliance. So again, it's going to be uh, interesting later on as, as I explain what we built. We use namespaces to provide uh, scopes. So namespaces in Kubernetes give us uh, network isolation, quotas, permissions. And uh, if you want to know more details on what our Kubernetes setup, uh, you can watch my KubeCon 2020 talk and uh, you'll find there that I went over all the things that we have built on top of Kubernetes to, to support AEM. And this talk is gonna just focus on the on what we are doing with, with Envoy. The requirement we got from customers is that they wanted to have a dedicated infrastructure. And dedicated infrastructure boiled down to uh, dedicated egress IPs. So traffic going out of the cluster, uh, they wanted to have a specific IP that is not shared across other customers for multiple reasons. Uh, for instance, uh, getting rate limited when hitting different API servers, uh, maybe filtering at the network level in some firewalls, well, whatever. There's, there's a few reasons to do that. And they also are interested in having private connections to their data centers or other cloud services things like uh, virtual networking, network peering, um, private link, express route, direct connect, all these services that cloud providers offers, uh, offers customers to, to set up their uh, virtual networking across, across multiple locations. And VPN, another one, uh, whether they want people to access the service through VPN only, or connect to uh, their internal systems uh, through some VPN. So this came as a requirement, uh, sort of, and uh, we came and, and, and worked on iteratively on how to, how to best support this. The first version we built uh, was running a squid proxies in virtual machines 
that uh, were connected to the internet and these virtual machines would give uh, traffic going through the squid servers their own and dedicated IP address. So how that uh, looked like, um, we have Kubernetes on one side, we have pods running, uh, Adobe Experience Manager inside the Kubernetes cluster. Traffic is going out through the, uh, through the load balancer of the cluster. And this traffic goes into a virtual network where we run multiple uh, squid VM uh, scale sets, auto scale sets, uh, one for each customer, one for each tenant. So the traffic goes from the cluster into the virtual machine, squid servers, and um, then it goes out of the load balancer um, in front of the squid uh, machines. The load balancer is both uh, for incoming traffic to the squid and uh, outgoing traffic. So that load balancer uh, has a, has a private, well, not a private, a public dedicated IP for that uh, auto scale set of virtual machines. So we run an auto scale set uh, because we don't want to have just one squid server and when it goes down or whatever happens, or if we want to run upgrades, obviously we want more than one running and we want it to automatically uh, scale on demand if there's um, a lot of uh, traffic. So again, traffic going, coming in from Kubernetes into a load balancer that is in front of a squid servers, squid VMs. And then from there, it goes out to the internet through the load balancer that has a dedicated uh, IP address. So that's what gives it, uh, the load balancer is what gives it uh, the dedicated IP. And there's a scale set for each tenant. The Java virtual machines are configured with the squid as an HTTP proxy, and this becomes transparent for the customer. Uh, Adobe Experience Manager, I mentioned before, it's a Java application. You set some system properties and then every connection that goes out to the internet uh, is going to use that proxy. So all the traffic is going transparently into the squid VMs and then out to the, to the internet. We use Kubernetes network policies to prevent one tenant to access uh, a squid proxy from a different tenant. So that's how we uh, limit uh, or prevent that one tenant uses the uh, dedicated IP of, of another tenant. And uh, as, as I mentioned, each tenant gets an auto scale set and their own load balancer with the, with the dedicated IP. All the virtual machines run into a virtual network that is peered to the Kubernetes cluster virtual network. And so this gives uh, high speed, low latency, private connections between them both uh, virtual networks. What is good about this solution? It's a simple and transparent uh, JVM configuration uh, using the system properties that Java supports. And the VNet peering, the virtual network peering, makes the traffic all the traffic private. On the other hand, uh, we have some issues like proxy authentication and authorization is not really well supported on, on Java or, or other or Squid. So we need to use network policies to, to prevent tr one tenant traffic going through a different tenant uh, Squids. Squid VMs, and this complicates a bit the setup. It only works for HTTP and HTTPS protocols. And if uh, if somebody by mistake were to use HTTP protocol, uh, the traffic would not be encrypted. But this is kind of a problem in general that you don't want. Uh, I mean, people should not be using HTTP. And it doesn't support other use cases like a uh, virtual private network or private connections um, because it's uh, it, everything is running on, on the same virtual network. All the proxies, all the VMs are running on the same virtual network because that makes it easy to do the peering to the Kubernetes network 
but in turn uh, makes it uh, hard impossible to do other other use cases so we came up with a second iteration using envoy so we it's a very similar architecture but uh, we are running envoy on the virtual machines and also running envoy as pod side cards to adobe experience manager uh, pods containers so the architecture is similar we have on one hand the kubernetes prox uh, kubernetes cluster on the other hand we get uh, we have a virtual network and in this time we give one virtual network for each tenant a dedicated virtual network for each tenant we have a virtual machine uh, uh, to scale set as before but this time running envoy for the same reasons i mean we don't want one vm to go down and this this also runs across uh, multiple availability zones and uh, it can auto scale if there's a lot of traffic having one vnet uh, for each customer allows us to also um, have more open opportunities to grow the, the architecture and support more use cases so each tenant gets the virtual network an auto scale set and load balancers on the on the right hand side what you can see is that the virtual network can be privately connected to the customer network so um, cloud providers allow you to have uh, vnet peering allow you to have vpn or any of the private link express route all these things at the virtual network level so you can you can do it as a service you can just tell azure aws google um, connect this virtual network to something else that the customer already has and so this allows us to have all these other use cases that in the previous iteration we didn't have. The load balancer in front of the virtual machines, uh, as before, gives the, a dedicated public egress IP to the traffic going out of Envoy. So once the traffic is on the virtual machines, it can go out to the internet with a own dedicated IP, something that we already had in the previous version, but uh, we still support, put support. We have a private load balancer that is connected uh, also to the customer side uh, network. So this load balancer, all the traffic coming from Envoy into the customer network with whatever of the connectivity options that the cloud provider has, this would give all the traffic a dedicated private egress IP. So on the previous load balancer, we would get a public IP of all the traffic going into, into the internet. And on this case, uh, we would get a private IP, dedicated private IP for, to all the traffic going into the customer's network, private network. the jvm is configured as before with uh, http proxy in the, but this case instead of pointing to the vms is pointing to the to the envoy sidecar running in the same pod so the am container the adobe experience manager java container uh, uses the local host envoy sidecar as a proxy for for the transparent forward then the traffic from that envoy the sidecar envoy to the envoy running on vms we do a http2 tunnel uh, for all the traffic that is encrypted and authenticated with uh, a mutual tls so this allows us to do full encryption from the pod to the virtual machines running envoy on the on the scale sets so what's good about this solution uh, we have the same pro as transparent configuration on the java virtual machine 
using HTTP proxy system properties. So that part is transparent to the customer. We support any protocol, uh, not just HTTP. HTTP is very easy because on the headers, uh, Envoy can inspect that and know where the traffic is going. But for any other protocol, we can support it by adding Envoy listeners in different ports um, in the sidecar container. So the traffic from those different ports can be routed to the correct destination. All the traffic going out of the pod into Envoy, into the outside of the cluster is encrypted. So uh, we, if there's any mistake by the customer or something that, uh, that is not encrypted, this makes it automatically encrypted. The virtual network, dedicated virtual network per tenant allows configuration of multiple options on the, on the service level of the cloud provider, VPN, private connections, express route, private link, all that. And it's just a matter of configuration on the, on the service uh, of the cloud service. Mutual TLS prevents unauthorized connections and uh, like one tenant connecting to a different tenant uh, Envoy virtual machines. So something that we were doing before with uh, network policies, we can do it now just using certificates and it's much simpler to, to manage and uh, more secure. There's some drawbacks um, like VPN and private connections like require uh, that the VNet has a non-overlapping IP range with the customer private network. So requires some uh, interaction with the customer to know what are their range of IPs. And the certificate management becomes a bit complex because we need uh, one set of certificates for each tenant, for both the sidecars and the virtual machines. So uh, we have a certificate authority and we emit certificates for each tenant. And then uh, we, we have to emit uh, for the sidecar, for the VMs and the different VMs and, and all the pods and so on. And then we have to rotate them, ex handle expiration, all these things. And that kind of becomes a bit uh, complicated. How did we configure all this with Envoy? Envoy, Envoy is very powerful. Um, so what we did is uh, look at the feature support and uh, we built this solution that on one hand, you have the Envoy sidecar running on the pod. And on the other hand, you have the uh, Envoy running on the, on the virtual machine. So from the container running uh, Adobe Experience Manager, uh, we have HTTP traffic that uh, goes into the Envoy sidecar as a, using it as a proxy, so using the connect header. And this is one listener using TCP proxy filter, Envoy TCP proxy filter, both HTTP, HTTPS, and HTTP connect gives Envoy the destination. So uh, all the traffic going into the side, sidecar through this listener, uh, Envoy is going to encrypt it and tunnel it uh, on TCP over HTTP2 and uh, using MTLS, and it goes to the Envoy running on the VM. The Envoy running on the VM examines the, the connect header and then sends the traffic to the internet through a dedicated public IP for that tenant or to the private uh, network, if that's the case, uh, through the dedicated private IP. For other ports that are not HTTP, we have one listener for each port and the destination we ha have to hard code it into the Envoy configuration uh, on the tunneling config part. So this tells, uh, we have a set of rules. Basically, if uh, if uh, traffic is coming on port 10,000, 
and then send it to smtp.example.com port 25. And if traffic comes to MySQL to the port, uh, whatever, 10,001, send it to mysql.example.com. And then on the other hand, the envoy running on the VM then knows what to do with that and sends the traffic to the, to the right place through the right uh, uh, interfaces. On the Envoy configuration, we have uh, also the cluster configuration. And on the pod side, on the sidecar, we have uh, just uh, pointing, uh, we just point to the Envoy running on the VMs, to the load balancer in front of the Envoy running on the VMs. And we configure the TLS uh, transport socket to do the mutual TLS. So, some examples, some code examples. The listener uh, for the proxy, you can do it like this. It's listening on port 3128. And the filters is just uh, TCP proxy and pointing to cluster, cluster underscore zero. Other ports, not HTTP, you can do the same thing but just in the tunnel and config, just put the host name of the destination. So any traffic coming through this listener is going to end in, in that host name that you are setting that you can put the host name and the port. On the Envoy sidecar, the cluster configuration, it's uh, just pointing on the LBN points where uh, just saying what where the Envoy uh, VM load balancer is listening. In this case, it would be Envoy underscore VM on port 443, for instance, and this would go to that uh, load balancer and that load balancer would uh, send the traffic to, to Envoy. And the transport socket configuration, this is where all the MTLS is happening and you set what's the certificate and the private key of that envoy and uh, the trusted CAs. So as long as both, uh, both sides have a certificate trusted with that CA, envoy can, can connect to that. And envoy will present, uh, envoy on the sidecar will present its own certificate to the other side. Now, on the VM side, uh, we have one HTTP connection manager listener that has the connect upgrade and uh, takes all the traffic coming through through this one port and one port only. We don't need more than one. And on the clusters, we just configure a dynamic forward proxy, and then this is. Uh, this handles all the connections, all the, oh sorry, all the destinations for all the traffic. We don't have to have more than one cluster. The listener side, so listening on port 443 and the connection manager, HTTP connection manager uh, filter. And then what it does is the DMAX, uh, the multiplex, uh, the, all the traffic coming through, through the tunnel. So this is configuration that you can find in the Envoy examples. Uh, basically, it's telling uh, the upgrade is connect. So everything uh, that is coming through there, send it to the destination set on the connect headers. And just a small detail that if you want to use uh, this as a proxy with HTTP, not HTTP, with HTTPS, the other the first route just is enough, uh, the route that matches on the connect. Um, but if you have traffic coming in through H, uh, using HTTP and not HTTPS, sorry, not coming, but encapsulated that were originally for HTTP, you need the second rule that matches the slash and sends it to the, to the same cluster. So this is just a, a small detail. So you just need to this one, these two routes, uh, to match both HTTP and HTTPS. The filters is just the router with uh, allow, connect, allow connect on HTTP2 protocols and the upgrade type 
connect just to handle all the traffic that is coming through the tunnel and on the transport socket this is the other side of the mtls uh, connection connectivity and, and and security so same as before we set the envoy certificate public key and the trusted uh, certificate authority and and small detail here is that we say match subject alternative names to a specific subject uh, alternative name so only certificates that have this sun in this case envoy sidecar can connect to this envoy and this is where it's uh, defined which tenants can connect to this envoy so you can have certificates with different sans and each uh, each sun can only talk to its counterpart envoy in the VM. So each set of envoys has their own line here, their own match subject alternative name, and then uh, envoys on the sidecars have different certificates for different tenants, different sans, different subject alternative names for different tenants. And this is what validates that is not receiving connections from somebody else. On the cluster side, it's just a simple uh, dynamic forward proxy, so we don't have to define uh, what are the destinations. It will uh, figure it out based on the, on the DNS name, and that will uh, just uh, forward all the traffic. Some resources, if you wanna check examples on the envoyproxy.io uh, documentation side, yeah, you can read about the HTTP upgrades where it explains how to do all this tunneling thing. TLS and double proxy is what allow, explains uh, how to do the MTLS authentication between two envoy proxies. Some advice, let's say, about debugging on, on cases like this. The TLS connection errors uh, only show up in the connection component, the backlogs. So, from the client point of view, you will only see that the connection is dropped or uh, the connection is not established and uh, or sorry, the connection is closed and you have to go and look into the uh, debug logs, debug logs for the, this uh, connection component. Then you will see things like if the certificate subject alternative name doesn't match uh, the one that the envoy in the VM is expecting on the other side, you will see things like certificate verify failed on, on the virtual machine side. So this is where you can see, okay, why is the connection being closed? You can go to the VM side and if you see this, or on the sidecar side, you would see something like alert certificate unknown. And then you would know, uh, okay, I'm, I made a mistake on the configuration or something like that. Otherwise, Envoy is not going to give you a lot of information and in the default uh, logging levels. So that's it. Uh, I hope you uh, like it. So if you are uh, looking to do something like this, having dedicated infrastructure in your Kubernetes clusters that are like shared across multiple tenants, Envoy is a very nice solution to do networking side things. And uh, for us, it allows us to do this uh, whole dedicated vir uh, IPs, dedicated uh, virtual network connections, dedicated uh, like private link, express route, VPN, all these things um, are basically or put together thanks to Envoy, uh, allowing us to do this encryption end-to-end uh, -end and routing of the networking and uh, dedicating infrastructure to, to each specific tenant. So it's a, it's a very interesting project. Uh, we are liking it a lot so far, and I hope you get some ideas from, from this talk. Thank you, and you can find me on Twitter, at C. Sanchez. Um, thank you, have a good day.